Number 25. Tonight, when the sun goes down, look up. Depending on how dark it is outside, you can probably see several thousand stars up there, all of which come from our own galaxy, the Milky Way. If you look a little bit closer, you may be able to spot one of only a few galaxies other than our own that's visible with the naked eye. Number 24. If this makes you feel small, it should, because scientists estimate that there are hundreds of billions more galaxies in the universe, none of which you can see without a telescope. Moreover, each one of those galaxies has billions of stars, which brings the grand total number of stars in the universe to 10 billion trillion, which is 10 followed by 21 zeros. That's more stars and the number of grains of sand on the Earth. Number 23, dark matter. All the stars, galaxies, and black holes in the universe only compose about 5% of its mass. As crazy as it sounds, the other 95% is unaccounted for. Scientists decide to label this mystery material dark matter, and to this day, they're still not exactly sure where or what it is. Number 22, for those of you considering opening your own pubs, there's probably no place better than Sagittarius B. Although it's 26,000 light years away, this interstellar cloud of gas and dust contains over a billion, billion, billion liters of vinyl alcohol. Okay, so it's not really drinkable, but it is a very important organic compound that's critical to the existence of life. Number 21. In the late 1950s, by way of something labeled Project A119, the United States decided it would be a good idea to launch a nuclear missile at the moon. Why? Evidently they felt it would give them a leg up in the space race. Fortunately, the plan was never executed. Number 20, the Ponzo illusion. Have you ever noticed that when the moon is closer to the horizon it appears to be a lot larger? Well, it's not. What's happening is actually something that your brain does all the time. Think about when you see one of your friends on the horizon. Although they appear to be really small, your brain doesn't actually interpret them as being that tiny. Something similar is going on with regards to the moon. Your brain is inflating its size to make it appear larger than it really is. Don't believe it? Next time you're looking at an oversized moon, block everything else out with your hands and watch it shrink. Number 19. Upon leaving the moon, astronauts on the Apollo missions describe moon dust as smelling like gunpowder and feeling extremely soft. Scientists, however, are still not exactly sure why this is because the two have extremely different compositions, with moon dust consisting mostly of small shards of silicon dioxide glass. Number 18. In 2004, scientists discovered the largest diamond ever. In fact, it's a collapsed star. Measuring 4,000 kilometers across and having a core composed of 10 billion trillion trillion carats, it's roughly 50 light years from the Earth. Number 17. Strangely enough, Venus completes an entire orbit around the Sun before it manages to turn on its axis once. This means that its day is actually longer than its year, and in Venusian time, World War II ended only 56 days ago. Number 16. Saturn floats. As big as the planet Saturn is, if you were to put it in a glass of water, it would float. This is because its density is 0.687 grams per centimeter cubed, while water's is the famous 0.998 grams per centimeter cubed. Unfortunately though, you would need a glass that's over 120,000 kilometers in diameter to witness this. Number 15. Cold welding. This is a phenomenon used to describe the fact that whenever two pieces of metal in outer space touch each other, they are more or less permanently stuck together. While welding usually requires heat, in this case the vacuum of space does the trick, hence the name. You might think then, how do space shuttles accomplish anything out there? Well, typically metals on Earth have a layer of oxidized material covering their surface that prevents this, so on shuttle missions the risk of accidentally welding the shuttle to itself is negligible. Number 14. Earth has more than one moon. Okay, not really. They're more like moon wannabes, but scientists have discovered several asteroids that are more or less following the Earth as it moves around the Sun. Number 13. Earth does, however, have over 8,000 objects orbiting around it. Most of these would be classified as space junk or debris left over from spacecraft and missions in the past. Number 12. Lunar drift. Every year, scientists have determined that the moon moves about 3.8 centimeters further from the Earth. As a result, Earth's spin has slowed by about 0.002 seconds every day over the course of the last century. Number 11. While most of us know that the light hitting Earth took 8 minutes to cross the 93 million miles between our skin and the surface of the sun, did you know that the energy in those rays started their life over 30,000? years ago deep within its core. They were formed by an intense fusion reaction and spent most of those thousands of years making their way to the sun's surface. Number 10. The Big Dipper is not a constellation. While it's not our intention to burst your bubble, we thought we should inform you that it's actually an asterism. There are only 88 official constellations in the night sky and everything else, including the Big Dipper, fall into this other category. It is, however, composed of the seven brightest stars in the Great Bear, or Ursa Major constellation. Number 9. Constant Motion. You're standing on a planet that is spinning about its axis while rotating around a star that's revolving around the center of a galaxy that is itself barreling through space. Sounds like enough to give you motion sickness, right? Well, before you take your Dramamine, let's visit our next point. Number 8. Galileo's Theory of Spatial Relativity So how do you know that the bus you're taking to work is in fact moving? What if you're sitting in the only motionless object in the known universe and everything else, including the road beneath your tires, is moving instead? Well, the truth is that there's no way to prove what is moving and what isn't. It's all relative to your frame of reference. To you, the person across the aisle is stationary because your frame of reference is the bus. To the person watching from the sidewalk, however, you're both speeding along at 60 kilometers 
kilometers per hour through traffic because their frame of reference is the Earth. Let's take this a bit further though as we move on to number seven, the speed of light. Going back to the bus example, if you were to shoot an arrow out the window at a target down the road in front of you, how fast would it be moving when it hit the bullseye? Well, essentially it would be going the speed of the bus, about 60 kilometers per hour, plus however fast you shot the arrow. Now, what if you shot a beam of light at it instead? Since the light travels at 186,000 miles per second, we would just add the 60 kilometers per hour, right? Wrong. Scientists found that no matter what, light travels at the same speed. Which brings us to our next point, number six, the universal speed limit. As a result of the aforementioned fact that light cannot exceed 186,000 miles per second, it would follow that nothing can which is exactly why this has come to be known as the universal speed limit. This, however, has some interesting consequences and leads directly into number five, Einstein's theory of relativity. Without getting too complex, Einstein essentially came forward with the revolutionary idea that not only is motion relative, but time is too. In fact, they're linked together. The faster you move, the slower others will perceive that time has passed for you. Why? Well, imagine this. As you're sitting in the bus, you shine a beam of light at the opposite wall. Let's say in one second it covers two meters before hitting the other side of the bus. Now, let's think of this from the perspective of the person on the street. To them, the bus is also moving, so the beam of light actually covers 15 meters in that same second. Why is this weird? Think about it. Here we have an object that just traveled 12 meters farther in the same amount of time, but it was moving at the same speed. The only logical explanation is that to the person watching you from the road, it actually took the beam of light longer to reach the bus driver. This means that while you perceive the event to elapse in only one second, they perceived it in two. To them, your clock is ticking slower. While this was exactly the kind of nonsense scientists were trying to avoid, Einstein took it at face value and accepted the conclusion. Still don't believe it? That's why we're moving on to number four, moving clocks. Everything we just talked about is very relevant to modern technology. In fact, the clocks and onboard computers and navigation equipment have to take into account the effects of relativity. For example, if you measure the time that elapsed on a fighter pilot's wristwatch, you would find that it lagged behind yours by several nanoseconds. Number three, adding a nanosecond to your life by never climbing stairs. Remember high school physics? Because the force of gravity increases near the surface of the Earth, so does your acceleration, which means exactly what you're thinking. Time slows down. Once again, this is very relevant to modern society because at different altitudes, clocks tick at different quote-unquote speeds. Also, remember that since the Earth is rotating, someone standing near the equator is moving faster than someone at the North Pole. Once again, their clock is ticking more slowly. Number two, the twins paradox. If you've been keeping up so far, then this won't be too much of a leap. The famous twins paradox postulates that if you put one twin on a spaceship that was moving near the speed of light through space and left another on Earth, due to the effects of relativity, the twin in the spaceship would return to the planet significantly younger than his Earth-bound sibling. And number one, black holes. These intergalactic vacuum cleaners were actually at one time supermassive stars. When one of those stars dies, it generally blows off its gaseous outer layers and the core collapses into an extremely small and dense sphere. Imagine, for example, trying to pick up a tennis ball containing the entire mass of the sun. The immediate effect of this astronomically high density would be an insanely strong gravitational field. In order to break free from any gravitational field, you have to be traveling faster than something known as escape velocity. On Earth, spacecraft achieve this by reaching a speed of about 7 miles per second. On some collapsed stars, however, they would have to reach a speed faster than 186,000 miles per second, which is more than the universal speed limit, meaning nothing, not even light, could escape.